The idea at the beginning was to build beds, raised beds, and trees and shrubs, but little by little. The first thing when we established ourselves here in Ottawa is to ask people. Ask people who have experience what can be grown in Ottawa and what cannot be grown and, and when and so on. The magic answer regarding trees is three things. Plums, apples and pears. These are things that can grow in Ottawa. I see the base of each of the trees that have been planted in the lawn are, are mounded somewhat. So did you prepare or amend the soil before you planted the trees? Actually, when you plant a tree, you should not struggle against, against your soil. I dig a small hole, not, not a big hole, a little bit uh, larger than the, the root ball. And uh, with that, I mix my compost with the original uh, soil of, uh, of uh, even, even if it is a bad soil, because the tree will deal with that. It's not my job, it's, it's the job of the tree mm -hmm. to deal with that. I like that. I mix a little bit of compost, but I leave most of, of the original soil. I don't compress too much to make it a little easy uh, for, for the plants to, uh, to move on. And that's it. If you notice something very important, I let here weeds, because it helps in many, many ways. Many people try to clean, uh, clean it up, etc. No, it's better to leave the weeds. If you have pests, whether in winter or in summer, uh, these animals or pests, they will get something to be interested in rather than your tree. I have voles and moles here in the garden and they are harmful to, to veggies, mm -hmm. tomatoes and also pears and, and fruits and so on. So I give them some 5% of my, <laughs> of my space. I let things go like, uh, like a jungle. And is this sacrificial strategy working out? It's working out, actually. Oh, I have much amazing. less damage this year than the previous year. Nice. We live with, with other creatures, and this is what makes this garden sustainable and organic. You, you cannot have, have it organic without creatures and species. So here, this is the north part of the, of the garden. So uh, I expect all what you see here will stay up to December. So you have Swiss chard, you have kale, you have spinach, you have Italian parsley, and onions. I love onions, so these are green onions. The north part of the garden, I have the cool weather plants. The north part of the garden is really the one that will last for so long, like kale here. You have kale, I have dill, this is, uh, this is dill. I have uh, onions, uh, of course the garlic season is, is over, but uh, my garlic strategy is for every in each bed, at the perimeter, along the perimeter of the bed, I plant garlic. Oh, because they deter pests. They deter pests. They are skinny. Yes. They don't take uh, space. Yes. And Good I leave strategy. about 10 centimeters between them. Most of my tomato beds, I have nasturtium. It's good against pests and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's and it's edible. Yes. It's edible as yes. well. Yes. So the flowers. Both both flowers and uh, and leaves. Oh, nice. Yeah. I didn't know that. I sacrifice some species, some plants for others. As, for example, I have raspberries all over the fence and also a little bit inside the garden. And having raspberries everywhere will attract these Japanese beetles. Here I have the south facing part of the garden. So I have mostly tomatoes here. If there is damage of a given tomato, I let it in the ground so that if there are moles or voles or whatever want to eat them, they will eat the ones that are on the ground and not the ones that are uh, that are already in, uh, in the plant. I usually let the garden as is all over the winter. I, I don't touch it. Uh, that's because it's a source of food to birds and other animals. And also it protects my trees because these animals would not harm my trees if they find already mm -hmm. food. With my neighbor, actually at the beginning, I started my garden and she was hesitating to, to start her own garden. So I started to help her and encourage her that everything is possible in Ottawa, uh, as long as we know some rules and we have a strategy. So the first thing that we did is that we decided not to have a fence. Because the fence creates some separation between people. So having no fence gives us room to collaborate together. So as you see here, my garden is to the right and her garden to the left, and we are using similar strategies. For example, I started by having a chicken wire to avoid you know, rabbits getting into the garden. Uh, when she saw that the chicken wire has been effective for me, she did the same thing. If she needs seedlings from me at the beginning of the season, I give her and vice versa. So we help each other and also it's an example to our neighbors. Also, we have a few neighbors who come and visit and enjoy the, the things that we are growing. And of course, my philosophy in gardening is really diversity, no digging, no disturbance to the soil and uh, trying to, uh, to have all the species, creatures, 
uh, including humans, animals, to live in harmony all together.